Yeah, first of all, thank you all, thank you all for being here, both our media from home and uh, the local Charlotte media. Uh, we've had a great week, uh, so uh, appreciate the Duke's Mayo. We appreciate um, everyone, everyone associated with the bowl. Uh, it's been a great experience for not only our players, but our staff and their families, so that's much appreciated. And then uh, West Virginia showed up, you know, and I thought we had a great crowd. They were into it. Um, the the music selection was right on point for our guys, <laughs> for our people, and uh, and so they had a good time with that. And then they all stayed, and so I was glad that a national TV audience got to see how how Mountaineer Nation really supports our team, and, and they love football. Garrett did a good job saying that they do. They love football; it's important to them. And uh, I'm glad they were able to experience a bowl win too. And uh, I'm sure we'll sell some beer tonight in Charlotte. So uh, uh, everybody will be winning on that. Um, you know, I think one of the things that's special about college football is you have an opportunity to win your last game. And um, these bowl games, uh, I, I think they're they're meaningful. They they draw a ton of people to watch on TV. Uh, they're a good uh, celebration at the end of the year. It's a good reward. And uh, and they mean something. This is this is this means something to those twelve guys that played their last game for us. And this is going to be a catapult for us. You know, I really feel like we should end the season in the top twenty-five. I think we've earned that right. Um, I've got to vote, and I'll vote us in. And then I think as we go into the twenty-four season, I think we're a team that'll be preseason in the top twenty-five. We return a lot, and uh, I'm excited about that. But. The feeling in the locker room when you're able to hoist a trophy and, and, and be able to win your last game, that, that's meaningful, and we're very appreciative of that. You know, this was, a, this was not our typical game, you know, but we found a way to win. This, wasn't, this isn't the way we've won all year. We really won, won all year running the football, being heavy time of possession, uh, minimizing the other team's plays, um, and that wasn't how we won today. Um, you know, we uh, defensively, first of all, I thought we played extremely physical which is hard to do in a bowl game, but I thought our guys played really physical. You know, we had seven sacks, 11 TFLs, four quarterback hurries, two interceptions. Um, and so just fired up for our guys defensively. And then on special teams, made a huge difference. Um, fake field goal, punt return for a touchdown. Uh, we really swung the field a couple times with our punt unit. Um, and, and we got guys down on kickoff. So, you know, won the special teams battle soundly. And then offensively, not our best. You know, penalties uncharacteristic. Um, disappointed we didn't take advantage of turnovers. That's something we've really prided ourselves on this year. We didn't do that today. Um, but at the end, we found a way. You know, Garrett Green's get gritty. He gives you a chance. Um, they did a nice job playing the run. You know, and Garrett talked about 25. He's really good. I think 23 is really good. Um, and and they, they did some nice things with the line of scrimmage. Uh, but we found a way there in the second half to get some run game going. And, and then uh, our young receivers made some plays. So with that, I'll take questions. So, Coach, I mean, just big picture, nine wins, finish the season strong. What's that mean, not just to you, but the program overall? Yeah, I think it's significant. You know, when you look at the history, and, and we've talked about this, you look at the history, this is really the third time since joining the Big 12. We won 10 um, and one other time and, and won, a, won nine another time. And so nine wins. And, and knowing that we really played, um, we had a chance to win 11 out of, you know, I guess 12 out of our 13, or 11 out of our 13. We were competitive in the Penn State game late. Uh, didn't play very well against Oklahoma. That was really the only non-competitive game we had. Um, led two games late in the fourth quarter that we'd love to have back. Where would we be if we could finish in the fourth quarter against Houston and, and Oklahoma State? But I think this was a significant step for us. Um, we've got to continue to hold our roster together. You know, the next, you know, week, 10 days is big. Um, there's no more taking off and going to the beach and relaxing for, a co for some time. That's, that doesn't exist anymore. Um, but we got to hold on to our roster, but I think it really speaks well to what we, what we, what we can be and, and potentially could be in 24. Third row. Coach uh, Steve Reed from the Associated Press. Curious, what is, it, what is the satisfaction level of going from being picked 14th in your conference to finishing the season with a bucket of mayonnaise dumped on your head and winning a full game? Yeah, bucket of mayonnaise. I would not uh, – I would not recommend that to anybody. But, uh, no, I, you know, I, I thought that – I really thought the, the 14th, being picked 14th in our league was um, – I, I just thought it was not very good reporting. You know, and we returned the, mo we returned the most starts of anybody – or I think the most starts of anybody in our league on our offensive line. Um, we had a really good running backs coming back. You know, we had some pieces defensively up front. Um, so, never did I, th did I think that that's where we were. And I, I was pretty – pretty um, 
at our at our media days in Dallas, you know, I said that. You know, we weren't – that's not what we were going to be. And um, I liked our team. We've got a good mix of, of youth that's really hungry and some leaders that have experience and they got something about them. And I think any time that your 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 D line, your O line, are, are your are your two best groups, I think you got a chance to win. Okay, we're back here. How much did Zach's absence affect your game plan? What you thought you could do today, and then second, when did the idea for hey, going to take a shot deep on the first play come about? Well. We, We've done that a good bit, throwing the ball down the field on the first play. Some of them hit. Sometimes you got to check it down, but we like that. We try to come back to it again. Um, Garrett missed him, missed Traylon. Traylon could have had, you know, Traylon could have held it up, held up that trophy if we'd have, if we'd have thrown the ball a little better to him. Um, you know, we still, I mean, we ran the ball for 5.8 yards. You know, we had 164 yards. I don't know how many games in a row we ran for 140 plus. And so I think that speaks well to us because the expectations now are of that we, we we need to be dominant up front. Um, and really what I thought it was is we were rusty. You know, I thought that uh, Jaheim was finally Jaheim on that last run for the touchdown. He really stuck his foot in the ground, got vertical. Um, he's been kind of slowed by, by growing, so he didn't get to practice as much this week as he normally would. Um, we miss C.J., you know, he's kind of our grinded out guy. We missed him. And then Zach, I, I really feel like Zach's the best center in the country, you know, and, and really disappointed he wasn't up for the Remington. You know, I, I'd put his film against anybody's. And, uh, but we missed him. You don't take that caliber player out of the lineup and not going to miss him. But, you know, I still think that, that our guys did a pretty good job. Almost running for six yards of carry is a pretty good day. I know you talked earlier this year about how you were in favor of using the communication system in the helmet. I'll obviously got to use that today. Thoughts on it, how'd it go? Yeah. And, and, you know, obviously, is that something you want to see moving forward? Yeah, I think it's it's a positive movement. It, it, it helps. It, it I think it it lowers your ability to steal signals and some of those things that they really don't have a purpose in the game. Um, you know, we this was experimental. You know, I forgot about it. Uh, for like the, the the second series of the game, and I'm like, oh, I, I I can talk to him, and so like, but I, um, we we used the iPads a little bit today, and we used the, but we didn't like just wholesale because we were we were we were playing pretty good going into the game. I think we won. We won our five our last six, I think. Um, but you know, net counting this game, but so we didn't want to just wholesale. Uh, and as y'all know, there's a lot going on in December. You know, like there's a lot going on. So it's not like we had a whole lot of time to get trained and like really think about how we were going to handle the technology. Um, but I like it. I think it's a positive step for college football. We just got to figure out what the rules are going to be. Yeah, Neil, you, you, you talked so much about the excitement coming in. How excited do you think the guys were and how much of a factor did the crowd play in that? Oh, the crowd was, was a huge factor. You know, they felt that in warm-ups. You really felt it coming into the city yesterday. You know, when, when our crowd started really showing up, um, there's no doubt. And, and here's the thing, too. We've, our record's been pretty good. We laid an egg out in Arizona and, and just didn't play very well. But our record's been pretty good in these bowl games. And I think the reason is is because how we handle the preparation is we get our work done, all right, but we don't, we don't overwork them. It's not – we don't, we don't uh, have just a ton of contact. And we space out our practices at a pretty good rate. And uh, we don't treat them like regular season. You know, it's uh, it's meant to be fun. We're pretty basic in our schemes, so our timing should be okay. Um, and and I thought, and we give our guys some good downtime. We gave them some downtime here, um, kind of work time, play time. And when it was work, they got work in. And but they were excited about being here. And and there's no question that the crowd played into that as well. Two more front row and back. Neil, uh, number one, when did you know? Preston was, was definitely not going to go and that Beanie was going to be in that role. And how did he help Beanie? Because Beanie talked about him kind of helping him mm -hmm. in the return game. And then just any comments from you on Beanie one year in? I mean, talk about a lone season as a Mountaineer. It doesn't really get much better because this is All-American, plays in the bowl game when many others probably would not. And then first punt return for WVU since Taewon Austin 2012. Yeah. So we made the decision – uh, really the week after Baylor that Preston wasn't going to return punts, okay? Um, and his injury, um, we didn't know he wasn't going to play really until the day uh, – or my days are mixed up. So Friday when we started our game week, um, he had a scan and they showed it that his injury hasn't healed enough. 
Uh, so we were hopeful he was going to play some at wide out, but we knew starting on Friday. But we made the decision then just because he was exposed on punt return. And so we weren't going to do that in the bowl game. And so Beanie got a ton of work, and then Rodney was going to back him up in this game. And so they did. And, uh, and Preston was a big help. You know, we, we catch punts at the beginning of practice and after practice every single day. And Preston stood out there with him. And, um, and we blocked real well on that, on that, on that too. Um, and then Beanie, you know, I think his performance kind of speaks for itself. He, uh, you know, 13th consensus All-American. Um, he was getting close to breaking the, the PBU. I don't know if he broke the school record today or not, but he was getting close to doing that. And, I, and I, you all have heard me say this. Our local people have heard me say this. Is not only was he a great player on the field, which he showed today, he was great for our locker room, and he really helped some of our young DBs, which I appreciate. Last question. Back in the room. Justin Charleston. What were the emotions like after you have a victory with the hugs, the thank yous, with the seniors that stayed through, the guys that came in? What, can you talk about the emotions? Because we see the box score. We see everything. But those guys with you through practice, through everything, what were the emotions like here at the end? Yeah, I, I think that's what – I spoke on this a little bit early, early on is that's what's great about the bowl season because you can finish – as a champion, you know, and, and that locker room feels really good about themselves and what they were able to accomplish. And, and, and I think the, the other neat thing, too, is being able to experience that with your family. Like my wife, my kids were down there, my mom and dad and my wife's mom and dad were out on the field. We had a lot of family here. Um, and so those moments are always special. And we've got a we've got a, a family photo at every single one of our bowl wins. And um, and those are those are really those are special. And uh, I think this was five. And so we got them down in, in our basement and those something. Those are memories that we cherish. And the other thing, too, is your kids go through so much in this business. And uh, our last year, you know, what wasn't wasn't real kind to them. And so for them to go and be able to experience the highs that you experience after winning a bowl game is special. And then our players, you know, the work they put in and, and, and what they went through during the year, and to be able to come and have a reward to come to a great place like Charlotte, have a good time, and, and then experience the win, it makes it special for sure. Yeah, thank you, Coach. Yeah, thank you all.